Today's Patreon dedication is for Jason Belk. Thank you, Jason. Admiral Brass Unsinkable versus Edgar Markov, Sig, and Marquesa. Uh, fast mana with two of our lands. Yeah, can trigger more treasures with this, so... Yeah, hopefully that'll be alright. Everyone playing tap lands on turn one, we draw into a frantic search. And the first commander coming down on turn two. Couple of blue players likely to have island walk against us. In fact, we've already got an island down for Sig to hit us with. A talisman for the Edgar Markov player. Also got down Vault of the Archangel for later. And going straight into a vampire, Knight of Ebon Legion. So may not be able to get through with the breaches. All right, managing to draw into a land in the form of the Ottawara. So, uh, I'll keep hold of that just in case. Let's shock down the Blood Crypt, play the Sol Ring, and then we're in for Breaches, Eager Pillager, or we could hold up the Frantic Search and reanimate this with our Commander next turn. When does the Commander trigger? At the beginning of combat, so yeah, could do that. But I don't know if we've got all that much use for Angrath's Marauders anyway, so... Yeah, let's try and ramp with the Breaches. In the first Anthem effect from the Sig, Mero Regere, we'll be able to tap or untap permanence upon casting the Merfolk, deciding to hold back with the 3-3 Sig. Not worthy that Marquesa is holding up mana with seven cards in hand as well. More ramp in the form of Orzov Signet for the Vampires. And the Ebon Legion swings in towards the left. And looks like going to try and put a plus counter on that thing. So only four cards in the Edgar Markov player's hand, but buffing this up by plus three, plus three to put four damage over here. So that frees us up to swing in over here. Um, I mean, this player only has four cards in hand, so are they going to do anything to us? I mean, ganging up on what might be a Grixis control deck isn't necessarily going to be the worst plan. We draw it into an island so we can continue to keep hold of that Ottawara. Well, we're swinging in either way. Even though I'm not decided on who I'm going to swing in at yet. I think I will go in at the left as well. And then we can always swing in at the vampire player next turn and show that we're spreading damage. So breaches triggers for the first time. With one uh, pirate attacking we will just make a treasure. And that manages to land. It's an attack trigger anyway. But managing to hit our opponent. So through to the second main. Drop a land. And we will get down the coastline marauders. And definitely hold up the frantic search. Um, we've got Angrath's Marauders to discard. Hopefully we'll have some other things to discard as well. And if it needs to be, we can always go for the Chaos Warp as well, although I doubt we'll need to use it this early on. An Arcane Signet for Marquesa. And a Felwar Stone. Wanted to give you a quick Lucy update as well. Um, Cretin recorded a funny video. It turns out that... I mean, we found this out like within the first few weeks of Lucifer um, being in the house, but never caught it on video before. We've realised that we can't leave our drinks unattended on a coffee table or whatever because Lucifer likes to... Uh, I knew he liked to drink out of them. What we didn't know is that he likes to dip his paws in our glasses of water and wash his paws as well. So we've got video evidence of that now. Uh, yeah, and on one of the first nights that we had him as well, Cretin had a glass of water on the side of the table. And then we, in the middle of the night, started hearing this licking cat drinking type sound and uh, yeah turn the bedside light on and it turns out that he's up on the bedside table drinking from the glass of water so yeah we can't leave them unattended now apparently it's bottles of water at bed and carry around our glasses of water with us whenever we leave the couch you know so anyway I just thought that was a funny tidbit and a quick update on our dear cat Lucifer who's quickly turning into mascot of the channel apparently Sig at River Guide went in at us, and the Meryl Regere went into the right and was allowed through. Alright, that's a good one, a Twilight Prophet. Uh, I don't think my opponent has ascended yet, though. Oh, he'll have exactly 10 permanents by the time Edgar Markov makes a token. So that works out nicely. Does not have the mana up for the Knight of Ebon Legion, though. So just decided to hold back. That will give us a chance to cast ourselves a Frantic Search, draw two, discard two. And then we could even go for a Chaos Warp if we wanted to. I don't think there's anything that we're all that bothered about though. Just more mana and a Faithless Looting. So discard the Angrath's Marauders. And we'll lose the Ottawara as well. So we need to be getting closer to some actual card advantage here. There is an Urborg. Um, 
Yeah, I think I'm fine to get down the Urborg, just in case we discard that to a wheel or something. We do have wheels of our own in the deck, but we're up against wheel colours as well. Um, cast ourselves a Faithless Looting, draw two and discard two again. All right, and just more mana. There's a Malcolm. Um, so that's more looting effects. Clearing a lot of cards off the top. I think we just have to bin these lands. And let's attempt our commander into the open blue mana. And the Merfolk player is holding up priority. We mill four cards because Admiral Brass is allowed to hit play. Uh, let's see here, we've got Admiral Beckett Brass, which could be good for next turn if we can land some hits. Kindred Discovery, it's a shame to mill that. Port Razor, uh, does it get haste, this thing? Yes, it has haste until the end of the turn, so going for the Port Razor makes sense here. And then maybe the Beckett Brass afterwards. So we'll grab ourselves a Port Razor with a Finality Counter on it. Uh, finality Counter is when it dies, it doesn't care about exile or bouncing. So there we see ourselves a port razor. And we'll turn into the left to guarantee a hit with three pirates. And then I'll go in down the middle on the next one. So Coastline Marauder is going to get a buff. And then it's a treasure token. Exile the top card of the library. We can play it this turn. Triggering breaches all three times here. And we'll make it so that the Twilight Prophet can't block. Alright, and off the top we've got the Soul Diviner, which I may well play, actually, seeing as how we're having creatures come down with Divinity Counters on them, or Finality Counters on them, I should say. Uh, this now a 3-3 with Trample, and Port Razor going to trigger, because it's the first time our opponent has been hit by the Port Razor. So we get another beginning of combat phase, thanks to the Port Razor, which means we can grab the Admiral Beckett Brass with the Admiral Brass. And this will give a plus one, plus one buff. We can go wide if we keep the knight from blocking. We can trample through one vampire with this. Uh, let's say this gets blocked and the other two get through. So yeah, we should be able to hit the vampire player now. I don't trust this blue player not getting down a flash creature of some kind. Not that it probably matters. So turn everything in sideways. The coastline marauder will continue to get buffed. It kept its previous buff, of course. Oh, actually, this only triggers once a turn, doesn't it? So, yeah, our opponent can't be kept from blocking with the Knight of Ebon Legion, but yeah, if they want to throw it in the way of something, that's fine. Looks like they've got something. That is a D-Spark onto the Port Razor here. Yeah, I'm forgetting that this is once per turn, not once per combat. So, yeah, we don't get another treasure to cast this like I thought we would. And uh, like I said, we can't keep people from blocking, but that's all right. Getting removal out of our opponent's hands. We will be able to steal something with the Beckett Brass at least. So this now buffed up to an 8-4. And we get some chumps on the non-trampling pirates. So only hitting for 8 here. Only hitting with one creature. I don't think there's anything all that relevant to steal anyway. Might have stolen the Twilight Prophet, but... Taking an Arcane Signet will be fine. Hoping this player doesn't scoop. So at the end of the turn, Admiral Beckett Brass, we've got some non-land permanents that we can choose from here. We'll take the Arcane Signet, and we do get that permanently, so even if this goes down, we'll be able to keep it. Okay, and there's a Blasphemous Act, so we're going to permanently lose the Admiral Beckett Brass here. Well, it looks as though this might be getting countered. Alright, now instead, Sig River Guide. Target Merfolk gains protection from a colour, so they're going to protect their commander by giving it Pro Red. Blasphemous Act is damage based, of course. So our commander back into the command zone. And Olivia, mobilized for war, enters play after that. And now a Sea Hunter, three and a tap, can search for a merfolk and put it into play. And we take a hit from the Sig. Draw a Liberator of Malakir for the Vampire player. And then round to our turn after our pirates have been dealt with. There is a Hostage Taker. Do we go for our commander instead so that we can... Carry on getting some treasures with this, or a treasure, I should say. Yeah, let's just try and rebuild as quickly as we can after the board wipe. So, mill four cards again when it enters. See what we get. Uh, that is just lands and a demonic tutor. So, we're still going after the breaches, I think. It's not worthy that the Coastline Marauders does have Encore for six, so we can grab that back at some point if we want. Go through to combat, grab the breaches. And I want to swing in over here because I don't like Marquesa being left alone, but I think everyone's looking at us at this point, and I need to look like I'm spreading damage around, really. Also, I wouldn't mind if my opponent blocks with this thing. Anyway, Breaches will make another treasure. 
argument to be made for us exiling the top card of the library and trying to get a land, but there's no guarantee that we will, and a treasure token is guarantee of mana, of course. Can get down the Malcolm at the end of the vampire player's turn. Fires of Invention from Marquesa. So, yeah, this is why I'm worried about this player. Gets into a free Chasm Skulker, three cards in hand. They can discard a card and put a counter on the Chasm Skulker here if they want to. With Olivia, they decide against it. And Olivia comes in at us, as you would expect. So, Sea Hunter being allowed to survive for a turn cycle. And the 2 2 comes in at us as well. Still not seeing an island for the blue player over here. Continuing to hold up mana, probably for the Sea Hunter, but might have some counter magic if he's desperate. Indulgent Aristocrat is a means of sacrificing creatures and buffing the army. And the Indulgent Aristocrat putting a plus counter on each vampire by sacrificing a token. Drona comes in at us, again as you would expect. I would expect the vampire token to hit either one of these two players, because you know, he might be trying to get him to block with that Sea Hunter. First strike damage will happen with the Drana first, put a plus counter on each of these. So all the damage dealt there were at roughly similar life totals. This player's still at 33. So at the end of the turn, let's go for Malcolm Alluring Scoundrel. I'm not assuming that we're going to get the four plus counters on this. It's really for just a loot effect in order to enable the um, reanimation stuff. And it's a flying pirate as well, so we can trigger certain attack triggers and stuff like that, such as the one that's on Breaches. Okay, there's a land for us. Might just have to ditch the Chaos Warp, I think. So I think we go for Hostage Taker now and get rid of this and force them to use it straight away. Then we know how to attack and we'll have a better idea of what to reanimate as well. So forcing our opponent's hand, getting them to go for the Tutor. And it was a Seafloor Oracle whenever a Merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So looking to get in with their commander might have to give protection from black maybe over at this player to hit as well. But just getting the one Tutor with the Hunter is good. We've got Sirens in the deck such as this. I don't think we have any Merfolk Pirates to grab with this. We've got a Changeling, uh, the mono black, the single black unblockable one. I uh, doubt that's going to be worth it though. Um, let's go through to combat and let's go for the Angrath's Marauders here. And then it's through to attacks. We will uh, take Malcolm down the middle. The Breaches can go down the middle as well. We'll hold back the Admiral Beckett Brass and Grass Marauders can go into the right. And that triggers the Breaches all three times, so a treasure. Target creature can't block this turn. Um, we'll just make that the Indulgent Aristocrat. And then exiling the top card. Did hold off on playing a land just in case, and there we go. Looks like we talked it up, the Changeling Outcast. Now blocks from our opponents so all the damage goes through. And that does include a hit from Malcolm, so a counter onto itself. And then we will draw and discard um, an island. We will discard the island. All right, well, we're not doing anything else this turn, apparently. So let's go for the Faithless Looting flashback on that. Okay, there's Dockside Extortionist for some more mana. This one is whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents. Exile the top card of each of those opponents' libraries and you can play it for any mana. Um... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be hard casting that. I'd rather keep hold of the Chaos Warp, I imagine. So, Breaches. Yeah, we're going to miss a land this turn. Don't think I like that. We will get rid of the Chaos Warp, actually. Against my better judgement. Drop a land for the turn. And we'll tap that for a Black Mana, thanks to the Urborg. Let's go for the Changeling Outcast. First plus counter goes on the Chasm Skulker. A Cytoplast Manipulator has Graph 2. Can gain control of a creature with a plus counter on it. And finally see Marquesa the Black Rose. So the Manipulator grafts a counter onto the Marquesa. Olivia does not discard to put a counter on there. And the Olivia swings in at us. We would throw the Hostage Taker in the way of something here so that we can reanimate it next turn and probably exile the Marquesa. This cares about death as opposed to exile. It will dethrone though because we're at the highest life total. So Olivia finally getting that plus counter on it as well. So that makes it more threatening. Master of the Pearl Trident from the Merfolk player will give plus one plus one an island walk, so no prizes for guessing where our opponent's swinging him. Still no islands for the Grixis player over here. And the Cytoplast Manipulator having graft, it can put plus counters on opponent's creatures, which is why its ability works. Our opponent does have to tap his creatures down in order to draw these cards though, so maybe he doesn't want to do that. He only swings in the Sig towards us for... Some more commander damage, I think that'll put us at 10. And they do of course draw a card from the Seafloor Oracle. 
So we're down to 18, we've got the lowest life total here. I think for the first time in the game. Edgar Markov hitting play. Our opponent has to be careful putting plus counters on his army here against this thing. There's a couple of lines we could use here next turn. We could go for Encore with the Coastline Marauders and try and deal a whole bunch of damage. Especially with this thing in play. Or we could go for Coercive Recruiter. Reanimate that. Play Dockside Extortionist. Um, steal away. I don't know, probably steal this away. Take control of the Marquesa and maybe sacrifice it with this. If we've taken control of that as well. I don't know if we've got the mana for it, although we might do with the Dockside. Plus counter on each vampire you control as our opponent swings in, thanks to Edgar Markov. So the damage is being spread here. Drana goes into the left. We've got a 3-3 coming in at us, which we will block. Edgar Markov down the middle. So let's throw the hostage taker in the way so that we can reanimate that from the bin and maybe exile something else. Might just be worth exiling the dethrone creature. The Marquesa with the hostage taker next turn, just a nice simple play. Master of the Pearl Trident blocks the Edgar Markov as well, so just going to give that protection from a colour I imagine. And yes, decided to tap out and give it pro black. Okay, we untap, managed to keep our board intact, get into another line, we've drawn quite a few of those this game. Although we're still only on five by turn seven. So what do we do here? We could go for this for six mana, and then just reanimate the hostage taker to get rid of the dethrone creature then each of these it'll get plus four here plus four here and plus four here it's not that much although it's eight damage with trample yeah i think i'll go for the more fun play we'll reanimate the coercive recruiter i think no idea if i can even afford to do this but it's been a fun game so we'll continue the fun theme that we've got going on here get the coercive recruiter down that comes we will steal away the uh, Cytoplast Manipulator. Alright, and our opponent decided to remove the final plus counter from this to put it on the Coercive Recruiter, so we can't gain control of anything. Um, I mean, that's fine, we get rid of this regardless, so I'm happy with that. It's noteworthy, actually, that the... <laughs> I didn't pay close enough attention, apparently. The Aristocrat had gone down anyway, so we couldn't have sacrificed this after we gained control of it. So we'll go to the left quite aggressively here, I think. Yeah, we'll swing all of this into the left. This is all double damage. And get our maximum amount of triggers from the Breaches, which has done work for us this game. Make it so that the Marquesa can't block. The top card of the Library Exiled is another land that might replace the Arcane Signet that we haven't made use of yet. Not this turn, I mean. So the only creature that can block is the Chasm Skulker, and it blocks the Coercive Recruiter. Alright, taking our opponent down to minus four, so that's one player down. Malcolm will trigger again. And we're fine to discard the Dragon Skull Summit here because we've got a land to make from Exile. But of course, we're just getting to another land. Discard the Steam Vents. We do have less mana to make on the Dockside Extortionist now as well. So during the second main, drop the Gaia Reach Sanitarium. And I think we just go for the Gaia Reach Sanitarium now, see if we can do anything this turn. Everyone draws and discards. <laughs> but it's just another land, so discard the land. Our opponent got rid of a spell crumple over here, so is playing counter magic. There's no counter magic in this blue deck, although I think I might have to put a fierce guardianship and a mana drain in, something like that. An offer you can't refuse, maybe. Yeah, we don't have that many means of blocking now, so let's go for this dock side, even though it's not going to um, generate a lot of mana for us. Yeah, it would be good if we had a means of sacrificing so that we could... Um, steal our opponent's stuff and then sack them off but we can't sacrifice our creatures with finality counters on them is the problem um so let's go for the sea hunter and i very much don't think that there's a merfolk in our deck but i'll try it here our opponent's going to get back the sea hunter at the end of the turn anyway yep definitely no changeling or merfolk left so shouldn't have spoken up the changeling outcast apparently although we can't block with this so not sure it would have been of much use there anyway so can we get taken out by the Merfolk player? He did control his creature at the beginning of the upkeep, so he will be able to tutor something out with that. Problem is, he does have to worry about the swing back, so might not want to dedicate too much into the red zone. He's taking Sig in towards us, which has two instances of Island Walk. Can walk over our lands twice. 
And the C4 Oracle goes in as well. Seven cards in our opponent's hand. Four mana. Hasn't done too well on ramping, but drawing a decent number of cards here. So we're going to take six, go up to 13 Commander. Our opponent can tutor at instant speed if that helps him. Doesn't look like he's going to though. So down we go to 12. The Seafloor Oracle going to draw. Yeah, on the whole sacrifice thing, I don't think we're too desperate for it. Maybe just having a high market and a Phyrexian Tower in the deck as lands would be good. Something like sacrificing Dockside so that we can reanimate it again the next turn might be useful. Little plays like that. But definitely, if we're going to be stealing our opponent's stuff, then it will be handy for us to sacrifice it before we give it back at the end of the turn. This is a Tide Shaper that's been kicked. Target land becomes an island, as long as it remains on the battlefield, so that'll be handy against the Mardu player. Not worthy that, thanks to playing a tap line this turn, our opponent doesn't have the Sea Hunter held up. Turns a swamp into an island. And it's time to see if we can survive through the next turn cycle. If our opponent can get rid of a blocker or two, then... That'll be us done. Haven't really managed to keep our hand full this game. There's been plenty of um, card filtering in the form of looting, which is good, but yeah, not a means of keeping our hand actually full. All right, well, that's one means of removal. The Path to Exile goes on to the Dockside Extortionist. We will go for a mounting with this. <laughs> and in typical Mardu fashion, our opponent does have the removal, so Vindicate on to our commander does mean that we were too aggressive in taking out the other Grixis player. And it looks like we're going down to some vampires. Good game though, it was like old school Battlecruiser style commander, which is what I like. The board wasn't getting wiped every turn and wasn't spot removal and counter magic tribal. Facing down combos at turn 5 and all that. So yeah, down we go here. I'm assuming that our opponent's dedicated enough to the board. Um... Okay, he's assuming that we don't have removal. He should have probably gone in with all three creatures at us in case we can remove one. Luckily for him, we've just drawn into lands all game. Yeah, so one piece of removal in our hand, um, one fewer piece of removal in our opponent's hand. We could have survived a turn cycle here and I dare say continue to do a bit of something. But yeah, it's a fun deck that. I'd put it at like power level 5 or 6 around then. It's like I said, it's like casual battle cruiser style magic that we're playing here, which I'm very happy about. So now it's Merfolk versus Vampires. Lord of Atlantis now. And that is Island Walk and plus one plus one again on the Merfolk. So uh, Master of the Pearl Trident and Lord of Atlantis give each other Island Walk, which is relevant. Sea Hunter going to Tutor. Gets out a Vidalian Hexcatcher, which is a new one. Sacrifice it, counter a non-creature spell. Unless its owner pays one. And that's another Anthem effect, which the deck will be rammed full of. So a 5-5 Commander, 5-5 Seafloor Oracle, a 4-4 Master of the Pearl Trident, and a 5-5 Tide Shaper. That is 19 damage swinging in for any of you that aren't so good with maths. And they are going to have some blockers held back, so... Yeah, the Mardu player needs to win here. Did manage to get into an island. And there's another blocker in the form of Tide Shaper Mystic, another means of making things into islands. Alright, a Nighthawk Scavenger now for some lifelink. I don't think my opponent's going to be able to make use of the lifelink though. Yeah, if he had one piece of removal here, he'd be able to go wide on my opponent. Alright, so just swinging in with everything. I imagine our opponent's just playing it out for the fun of it here. Blocking both of the creatures on the ground. Going to take nine to the Drana. And then a Flawless Maneuver to make all the things indestructible. So in typical Azorius fashion, the Azorius player's got into the late game and has all the answers seemingly. And the House of Cards has come crumbling down here. I take out the Grixis player, which allows the Vamp player to take me out, which allows the Merfolk player to take out the Mardu player, or within a turn cycle or two. So we will go straight through to combat with the Merfolk player, who is very respectfully just turning in sideways against the Vamps. And there we are. Merfolk wins it. I feel as though that's always what Commander was supposed to be. What it was always intended as. I don't mean to be... <laughs> I sound like a... Some kind of gatekeeper purist, but yeah, not happy with how it's developed in recent years into kind of CDH, get a combo down as soon as you can territory. I just don't see why you wouldn't play Vintage or Legacy, something like that, if that's the way that you want to play. But to each his own, I suppose. I just really like this style of Battlecruiser magic. You can let me know if you liked it in the comments section, and hopefully if you did, I'll be able to get more games in this kind of style. Anyway, thank you to the patrons for their constant support of the channel. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.